Hello, fellow treasure hunters. Welcome back. Before we delve into the details of our most recent investigative developments, continuing on with our thread of adventure, discovery, and possible treasure, resting deep within this tree-covered rock, we need to give out an update on backstage developments regarding the curse. Thanks to your continued support, your insatiable appetite for the truth, and indeed a seemingly everlasting passion for this 300-year-old mystery, it has somehow acquired a mini treasure all of its own. The many entrepreneurs and other business interests, attracted by the prospect of wealth and relics of considerable value, have moved in on the area. Due to this, the Nova Scotian government has kindly donated $1.5 million to the Curse of Oak Island show and the treasure quest thereof. One has to wonder, is this just an economic move? A rare governmental act of generosity? Or rather, a cunning investment? maybe due to being aware of compelling evidence suggesting that the island does indeed contain something of great value. Additionally, although the History Channel is infamous for hyping upcoming shows with startling and often exaggerated rumors, they have indeed suggested that something has been found over summer, a mysterious key and also chest of some form. Regardless of rumors, the investment not only confirms the fact that the brothers are indeed determined to get to the bottom of this mystery, and it is also an incredible incentive for the History Channel to continue running with the show. During our most recent research, it seems we have inadvertently stumbled across documented evidence of ancient habitation of the surrounding Nova Scotian area. Not only that, but due to their activities many thousands of years ago, a logical reason for the construction of man-made Smith's Cove. Featured in the BBC documentary series known as Wild Canada, imagine the shock when David Attenborough begins to describe this little gem in detail. Ancient people, coffer damming or constructing man-made pebble beaches at low tide all along most of the Nova Scotian coastlines, all with the purpose of creating artificial oyster bays. And amazingly, these artificial bays are actually of the exact same layout as Smith's Cove. Could this be an answer to one of the many remaining yet largest riddles on the island? Could this man-made coastline actually be an extremely old oyster farm? The old cofferdam found, being but a mere part of this ancient civilization's activity, now witnessed and documented all throughout Nova Scotia, Regardless of whether this solves the riddle of why Smith's Cove was once created, we still have no suitable explanation for highly advanced, masterfully constructed flood ducts coated in coconut fiber sprawling out from within the island's inner workings, strongly supporting the continued premise that something was indeed hidden in this island, something hidden using considerable effort. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.